Uh, oh, by the way, I should tell you, Mike Tyson is coming in today. Ooh. So I'm looking forward to speaking to Mike Ty- the Iron Mike Tyson, the uh, great you know, boxer. Ganji is a huge fan of his uh, stage show. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll talk about everything today. I have a long list of things I need to talk to Iron Mike Tyson about. Our early events involved traveling all over the country fighting in these small clubs called Smokers. The reason why they called them Smokers was because the smoke was so thick and thin that you couldn't even see the guy standing in front of you to hit. Cuss was a big man in this world, and, um, and the fights were unsanctioned, which meant lawless. There weren't no paramedics outside. You got a concussion, you, got, you died, it's on you. You know, it's on you. Everybody close up and leave. And plus, if the crowd didn't like your performance, they didn't boo, they started fighting each other to show you how it was done. And, uh, and I had to often lie about my age. I was only 14, but cut that children me into a great Michelangelo still statue. Not now, though, but yes, back then, you know? I was cut up like, I was real, I, you know, I was really cut up like I got into the fight with the Latin Kings and lost, you know? But I was looking good. I won the national champions just like Cuss said I was. I was the champion of the nation at 14 years old. I was well on my way. Hi, I'm Mike Tyson. I'm on the Howard Stern Show. This is interesting. Um, I've never been to Howard Stern. I don't know what to expect. Um, he's older now. Um, what else should I, I noticed about him? He's... He seems to be nicer now. Robin seems to be nicer now. Maybe I caught him at the right time of his career where he's mellowed and he's a compassionate person. So you think you're going to get a kinder, gentler Howard Stern today? I have no idea. <laughs> All right, man. We'll see you in the studio. Thanks I will be there. All right. Hey, exciting morning. Mike Tyson is here. Iron Mike Tyson. Ah, Great to he's see you. He's smaller than I thought he'd be. Hi. Oh, you're so yeah. beautiful, Robin. Yeah. <laughs> Robin. Hi, Mike. Robin. Good to see you. Pleasure. Uh, good, good to, to see you. you. It's good seeing you, too, Robin. Let me look at you, man. You're such an iconic figure. So that are you, it's, it's so weird to see you in person, finally, after all these years. I always wanted to have you on the show, and I was always told through different people that you didn't want, you know, you didn't want to come on. You were nervous about it. No, I was gonna kick your ass, Howard. Uh, back really? Then. Back then, I was gonna kick Howard's ass. You don't remember, why? Robin? Why? I don't know. Why, was... why would you kick my ass? What did I do? You were just angry at everybody. <laughs> I was. Wasn't you're, I? you're an angry man. <laughs> what was Mike, that is that true? About? You were gonna kick my ass? Well, I was gonna attempt to and stuff. Attempt? Oh, you <laughs> couldn't attempt. I think you would have handled it. <laughs> Mike, do you think that you could still fight? In other words, if you got into shape. I'm being serious. Okay. All right. The anger isn't there anymore, and, the, and maybe the, the will isn't there anymore. I don't know. But do you think if you had to train and fight, there's probably a lot of guys you could still take out, right? Well, no, it's, I couldn't be anybody. I just, um, I don't have that in me. I don't care who you are. If you don't, have, if you don't want to do this, you don't want to hurt somebody, it's not going to turn out well. Do you, but even in your personal life, you don't occasionally get angry and just that, like the rage of the, of the, the fight, you know? Well, that guy's not going to come out, but I'm, always, I'm angry that I'm not having my way. You know, my wife's not going to do this. My wife dresses me, so I get <laughs> <laughs> Does your wife dress you? Well, she, she tries to, but I go along with the program. Right. How is life now these days? Life is pretty awesome. Yeah. I'm pretty broke, but life is so awesome. I have my wife. I have my children. I just had my show in um, Washington, D.C. All my kids came out, and that was a special occasion. They all came out, and they never saw me perform before, so I, just, I felt like the happy pops. You know, it How many it children tr- are there? I guess I seven, mean, Robin. Do you, seven. You don't have any children, Robin. You should <laughs> No, have a you should give me. me a couple of no, yours. I, no, we should, <laughs> ten years ago, we should have had children, Robin. Yeah, you really, you should have made it with Robin. You know, hey, Mike. I when, like Robin. Robin Crawford. You know, when it, dri- it drives me crazy that you're broke. And I'll tell you why. It drives you crazy. Yeah. What do you think it does to me? <laughs> and he I, might I, feel worse, Howard. <laughs> a little bit, right, Robin? I'll tell you why. Robin, try, Robin, like Mike, Robin. the reason it drives me crazy, because you are a, a true student of boxing. You knew, you know, you're one of those guys who really understands boxing and where I, boxers continue, come from. Yes, 100%. And, and so when you look back at boxers, traditionally, They've gotten hosed every step of the way. They generate tremendous amount of income. Forget about what goes on gambling-wise, what they generate and all that. But, but it seems like every boxer ends up in the hole, always ends up getting beaten down b- financially. Well, there's a really small percentage that don't, probably a half percentage that doesn't. Right. But this is, um, 
Listen, when I was a young kid, I heard about um, Joe Lewis and Sugar Ray Robson. You hear about all these great fighters, Tony Cannon, Larry Luan. You hear about these guys that um, amazing fortunes and lost it. And you know this stuff. You all know this stuff. But still, they knew about the guys before them in the 10th and right. the early century and the 20s. But still, we go broke. Now, why? Because handling money is an art. It's it an is. art than handling money. And we never practiced that art before. Well, what did you do your, with I, all the money? Did you know where that money well, went? Well, a lot of people at, stole money. Well, as a I fan a of yours, of as a fan of yours, I got really nervous for you when you you had a bunch of guys who were white guys who were handling you and stuff. And I kind of feel like you went through this phase where you said, "Fuck that, I'm going with all black management." Blah 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 blah. Which is fine. Which is which is a great thing to do. But at the same point, you threw away the guys who were actually watching your money. Who I think actually no, were no. pretty good about that's it. That's not true. No. They were bad. They were really, they were really bad. That's they were bad too? Them. That's why I left them. Right. And boom. And if they, weren't Don so, King. if they weren't so bad, I wouldn't have ran away to this guy. What were they doing that was so bad? The, the white dudes. I thought uh, that they actually had your back. No, they didn't. And, um, they did what every particular white dude did to a black dude when he was a fighter. And these guys are the managers. They just pretty much, because I'm a young kid, I didn't understand about that stuff. I was a glory seeker. Yeah. And they were just um, patting everything, um, ev expenses, everything. I had no idea. Does it keep you up at night now, like knowing how much money? You, you probably had personally about $400 million. Does it keep you up at night now where you go, fuck? Never. It, never. Never. I, I never, in my, never once in my life I said, fuck. I just, um, I had everything I ever wanted, and I have everything I wanted now. Yeah. And plus, when I had all that money, I was so living such a chaotic life, I wasn't really enjoying myself. It was better if I was even dead at that time. I, I'm, listen, I can, I've accomplished so much now with nothing, more than I ever could with that half a billion dollars. Right. Um, I got an Emmy. I got um, a Golden Globe Award. I have a, I don't cheat on my wife. I don't bring back no venereal diseases to the house. Right. Um, I'm just living um a respectable citizen life. You know, I'm not no, it's no glory in us. I don't have no glorious life, but I'm living a life where I could live and survive now and uh, live with dignity. I guess I would, I, I guess, family. I guess what I imagine your life, it would have been nice if you, even if you held on to some portion of that where you'd have like your, 100 <coughs> million. You yeah, you'd have, you'd have your house <laughs> paid for, you know, you'd, I'd like to see you at least enjoying some of the, you know, when you're a the gladiator, foods, uh, yeah. when you're a guy who goes in the ring, one on one, mano a mano, most sports, team sports, you're talking about you went in by yourself and came out a world champion. You there's risk not, your life every time. There's not a lot of sports like that when you think about it. Uh, tennis, okay, one-on-one. -on -one. But boxing, it's not a risk your life situation. No, no but, but tennis, boxing, I'm trying to think of sports where it's just you versus another guy. You know, they're, Golf. They're yeah, what? golf um, maybe. Not even. Yeah, golf. I don't look at it that way, um, Howard. You know, I'm a professional athlete right. for over 25 years, so I don't look at it that way. I look at it um, that um, maybe this deserves to happen to me because I was just so good at what I did, no one else stands the chance. Yeah. And I had to grow up in other um, areas in life, too. Yeah. And by going by going through these ordeals, I'm, I'm such a better person. You know, I, I've lived life where I've seen a lot of my friends, you know, quite a few, not a lot, but um, they had a, great fortunes. They may have lost it, or lost some of it. I may have gotten embarrassed in the way they res um, they inherit, they got their fortune. Right. And know what they do? Um, they killed themselves. Right. Mm. And so um, that only tells me that's what they were worth is money. They weren't worth nothing else. Wealthy people who kill themselves because it wasn't the thing that made them happy, really, in the final analysis. Well, I don't know what it was. Or they lost it, and then they I don't said know what that it was, was most all they of the time. Were. It's because they lost it. Right. And that's why, because that's really all they're worth is some money. Big deal. Listen, I don't have $500 million, but still, I'm Mike Tyson. Yeah. I'm, well, you know, I listen. Um, but do you, know, you have anonymity where it. you live? Like, in other words, are you able to live, like, where, I don't know where you live now, but. In Nevada. In Nevada. Are you able to live, uh, I would imagine, because people, because you are Mike Tyson, you're famous. And one of the, someone once said the hardest thing is to be a famous person with no money, because you can't really hide. You're, you're now living in a regular community, and people have access to you. They can, you know, they can... They Does can, he really live in a regular community? I don't know. I don't know where Mike's living now. Well, um, well I live um, in a desolate community because 
Normally, everybody that lived there, that's their second house, so they're normally not there, so I live pretty <laughs> much desolate. Yeah, right. <laughs> Nobody shows up. <laughs> no, it shows up. I got pigeons. It's against the law to have animals. I got birds flying. There's nobody nobody checks on you. There's 50 houses. There's nobody there. There's big mansions. People think I'm rich. I, right. I, I hang on the other guy's lot sometimes. People think that's my mansion. I don't know how this stuff works, you know. The, the, the uh, IRS people are getting aggressive. Holy moly, no. My <laughs> when you, it, w the phase of your life that's so fascinating to me, when you went to prison, I always imagine, I thought about you a lot when you were in prison because... Thank you. Why didn't you write me and send me any commissary Because money? I didn't know you. So what? Don't think about me and worry about me if you don't know you. If you're a compassionate liberal, as you come across to be... Yes. With communist tendencies... You know, <laughs> oh, I'm a capitalist. <laughs> All right. I know you're a big fan of Chairman Mao, All which right. I'm going to ask you about. But, but when you were in prison... Was that the most difficult time in your life? Because I would think the other prisoners all want to make their bones and go after you because they're like, hey, Mike's not so tough. I'll go kick his fucking ass, and I'll prove to everybody I'm the toughest well, guy. I don't know how it... Now I'm not so tough, but back then I was. You look pretty tough to no, me I'm still. No, I'm not tough now. No, I'm not tough now. Trust I don't buy now. that. How, I Howard, I... I went oh, to no, a Mike Tyson that. fight. He fought a guy named Tyrell Biggs. Remember that fight? Yeah. And... When Mike Tyson walked into the <laughs> into the stadium, I said that other guy ought to run. He had such a fierce look on his well, face. Well, a lot of these guys, I mean, th th that was part of the whole thing too. They would shit their pants just when you'd walk into the into the ring, right? That's what they said. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? Like you had know. them psyched out before you even got when in I was there. fighting, it was beautiful. You know, when I look at it now, I'm like, I can't believe I said this to this guy. He's like, he's being, he's like, children now, I said this stuff. But you know something? Oh I look God. back on my own career, and I've said things to people that are insane because when I'm competing, <sighs> I get exactly. crazy. See, my wife doesn't understand that. My wife doesn't No understand. one understands it. Listen, when I'm competing, I'm suicidal. Yeah. I'm We've heard you. I'm suicidal when I'm competing. God, no, no, but please. you say suicidal. Yeah. Because you, everything goes out the window, right? Everything. Yeah. This is my only moment to show the world who I am because my self-esteem is so low. I never had, they're going to know my name now. Right. Fuck. Look well, what I did. Mike, I understand it because well, even for me, radio, competitively, I go into towns. I don't even know the people on the oppose me on the radio, and I'm screaming and yelling violently to get out of my way. Did you have health problems because of that? Yeah, I had tremendous problems. I, and I mean, I'm, I'm in a psychiatrist's office uh, three, four times a week because I'm of these pills that I'm gaining this tremendous amount of weight. I got the Zoloft going on. I got the perplexapine. I got the in and out pills. Man, I, man, they got me. I'm walking. I'm like a. I got my zombie swag on when I'm on those pills, man. <laughs> my, but when you go for the pills, you go into a psychiatrist to get these pills. Yes. Is he talking to you at all? Is he working with you in terms of understanding? No, no he, um, he doesn't give a damn about me, Howard, because he always was. Well, he's explaining the difficulties of my mental, my mental um, fragments. I forgot the word he used. Right. Not, I don't have good logistics, but. Um, when, oh, oh, time, sorry, I, I have to go. That's always <laughs> That's bothering it. me. I'm, I'm spilling my guts. This guy. I'm even crying. He's like, oh, Mike, oh, Mike, oh, Mike, oh, Mike. It's, it's over now. Excuse me. So, so Mike, uh, the calm, you, that thought. the new Mike, the, the, the yeah. calmer Mike, is it because of the pills or is it because you've had some sort of revelation in your life? Well, this is pretty much revelation. My wife, um, she was my girlfriend at the time. When she, she had mo it's funny when, you, when you're in love with somebody and you think you know somebody, and then when you really get intimate with them, when you're intimate with them every day, they're not the person you thought they was. And that's what my wife, she said, wow, I never dreamed that you were this kind of person, that you're always on these zombie pills and watching Law and Order. And so my <laughs> wife, um, she detoxed me. She started reading. All, she took all my medication. She started reading. She was my girlfriend at the time. Right. I didn't even know if I was going to date her that much, but she started reading everything. And she... Um, Started looking up everything and said, man, this is for homicidal people. This is for, really, Mike, this is for people that's in Bellevue that's locked up. Right. And so, wow. Um, and so she just started dying. Uh, wow. 
she started with cayenne peppers and all that stuff. Okay. Di- um, detoxing. Right. And, the um, master cleanse. That's what it's called. Right. She, yes. <laughs> she's into all these gadgets, you know, you read. And so I was one day she was eating just um, vegetables that whole day, that whole week, I guess, vegetables and stuff. And I said, What's, why are you doing that? She said, I'm a vegan for this, this week because of some weight. And I said, that's why I'm going to be a vegan because I was 380 pounds. Right. And I had to lose a lot of weight. You were 380. 380, man. It was the worst sexual experience of my life. So it shows you that you were really depressed because when you put on that kind of weight and, you, and you're on those kind of pills and everything, I mean, your well, life's out of whack. Oh, no, the after effect. These pills yeah. are going to help me, but, you know, I'm going to feel suicidal. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go to the bathroom on myself periodically. I'm oh, going to do dear. all these things. And uh, yeah. if the pills are killing me more than they're helping me. So let me ask you something. Why not go to a therapist or a psychiatrist who will sit and talk to you And maybe you wouldn't have to be on so much medication. Well, I've done that, too, and it didn't work. And so I had to go to the real place, rehab, and I had to go there for like two years or 15 months. And um, you can't, I'm not going to get well. I'm one of those people. You're not going to get me well on no 30-day or no 60-day program. I have to suffer. I have to suffer to get well. You got to put me in there for a year, and I can't be with nobody. I got to be in that dark cell, and I have to sweat it out. And it's not going to be, give me a pill, and it's going to work overnight. What happens to you if you go off all the medication? Are you just... I'm not on medication anymore. Zero. 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 Zip. I, sh- I should be on it, though, a little bit. But zip. No, I feel good. Though. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, oh, I no. thought you were implying yeah. that you were no. on medication. No way. I, he said the medication was doing him badly. Oh, congratulations. Howard, yeah. making him worse. Oh, that's yes. great. Yes. So, yes. You, so whatever you're doing, you're doing on your own, and that's it. Yes, with a lot of help. I had a, a great support system. And that's, you know. Is that's, it your wife who's helped you the most? Oh, absolutely. My wife. And there's other people, too. I had other um, people that were in my life that looked after me and sponsored me and Man, it's just amazing. The worst thing, that the, not the worst, the worst thing that ever happened to me is that I started using drugs really heavily. Yeah. But the best thing that ever happened to me is that I got involved with the recovery program. And there you meet people, um, wow, you meet some amazing people from all walks of life. So you're not doing any weed, you're not drinking, you're not doing anything. Hey, no drink, no cocaine, no ha- This is This is my um, drug of choice. No heroin, no cocaine, no morphine. No, liquor. you were doing the hard stuff. Yeah. Hey, but um, I'm a hard guy. Yeah. 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 I'm a hard guy. You think when you analyze so, it, no, go ahead. Analyze. When you analyze your drug problem and all that, and everything that you went through in your life, it all boils down to your upbringing. It's your mom. It was an awful situation. She was a prostitute. No, it wasn't my upbringing. It was my pain. Well, from your parents, right? No. Well, no. your mom was uh, not a good mother. No. Um. I don't know. Maybe she wasn't a good mother. Maybe she was. You know, I, mean? I, I don't know what a good mother is. Well. It, because, of course, I see people who are, um, you know, I mean, pretty much um, label good parents and they have miserable kids. Their right. kids commit suicide, murders, bomb, bomb. And, but this is what happens. So it has nothing to do with the parent. It has to do with the person and what he wants to be in his life. Do you ever get jealous of your own children, the fact that they have yes. a good father and a good mother? That kind of thing. Uh, I, I've been to that stage. Yeah, I'm not there no more. But I've been. But to you that are, stage. weren't always the greatest so, parent either. Come on. So, no, no, no. But um. But when you're parenting, I'm, I'm better than my parents. Though. Right. <laughs> I'm better than my parents, <laughs> and I'm suck as a parent. But right. I'm better than my parents. You're there. Yeah. So, I so, suck. so the th- no, I'm not even near. But I'm still better than my parents. <laughs> you did them a oh, favor going oh, away. My, oh, you are so. Oh, you are so right. That's yeah. I went true. away to That's get right true. now. I'm the parent that they need to have in their life. But back yeah. then, oh God, the best thing that happened is their mother left. Right. Ooh, because really? because the issue is. How do you even know how to be a good parent? And then as soon as you become a good parent, you say, shit, how come they got it so good and I had it so fucked up? Because you put, your, you put them in that situation that they have it good. Right. Because you don't want them to have it like you. You would probably kill yourself if your kids had the life that you... Imagine my kids lived, grew up in abandoned tenement buildings. Right. They would be terrible. Whoa. And yet there's a part of you that wants to make their lives better. And then there's a part of you that goes, hey, fuck. Who know are these why? kids know to have why? No, why? Because um, all your life... You despise the kids that your kids became. Spoiled kids never had a chance to take a deep breath, go, <gasps> because everybody always giving them everything. And it's that way now. And um, sometimes you want them to be able to um, take that deep breath to let them know it's hard, but you can still go to that further step. You can go further if you want to. Even though it's hard, you can still go further. When you tell your kids about your life, 
It's probably like you're talking like from Mars because they have no idea. They said, Dad, get out of here. You had to go to school. Because if I can't spell, because sometimes I misspell, I misspell right. and say, Daddy, that's not how you spell my name, Dad. Right. And they said, Dad, don't tell me dangerous is hard for you, Dad. Don't tell me that, Dad. <laughs> and I'm just waiting any minute he's going to say, Dad, tell me what it was like when you were a nigga, Dad. Tell me oh, what that no. life, Dad. Dad, what was that life? You're biting people's ears, savage. You know, what was that like, Dad? Because my kids are like in Ivy League schools and right. for high school right. kids and stuff. Billis, right. what's the name? Billis and what's the name with the president's kid? I, you know, I, I was intimidated. I went to my kid's school, and I was intimidated. <laughs> the, kids, the, the kids and all these kids intimidated me. I thought, fuck. I wait, thought I was in Harvard. Wait, <laughs> I know. It's crazy. <laughs> what the hell? I don't belong here. Right. It's, it's, it's another world, isn't it? Oh, man. It's, um, it's, it's interesting. Can, can you have? Do you have a good relationship with all your kids, or are they? Thank God. Thank God. You do. Thank God. Yes, I have. Um. Oh man, I'm just very grateful. You know, I have a. She's graduating from Georgetown Medical School, and I have a daughter. No I kidding. Have, wow. One of your daughters is graduating, going to be a doctor. Well, she's graduating to be one, but I right. don't know if that's particularly what she wants to do. I'm. Right. I got the. I'm, I'm in the. I'm in the. I'm in the liberalist. Well, some of the kids, but. I'm in the liberal. My oh, man, my family is so liberal. Yeah. <laughs> so liberal. I can't even. Well, you're walking around with a Chairman Mao yeah. tattoo. Of course, they're going to be liberal. But I can't even go around and say, "Hey, it's a possibility that um, Mr. Christie from New Jersey. He's a good guy, Christie. He's a, you know, it's got to be. He's the only. You real, can't even he's say the only, that. He, no, but he's probably the only Republican <laughs> we can say. But him and Michael Steele, they're the only Republicans <laughs> we can talk about. Everybody else is garbage. What the heck? Come on. Go back to if you if you can mentally go back to prison for a second because okay, I want to ask you. Okay, okay. Here you are, famous. I'm there, Mike, I'm there. And by the way, I got to say, Mike Tyson is currently the reason he's here. He's on tour for his one man show, Undisputed yeah. Truth. Um, we've heard great things about it from guys who work here with us who have gone to see you and loved it. Uh, for tour dates and you're tickets. Metal, you're just metal. This is not normal. You're just too mellow. Who's mellow? You. I'm mellow. I came up here in anticipation talking about anal sex and this and that. Well, like, we'll get and to it. We'll get to it. We'll yeah, get right. to it. I'm sorry. Have We're you, working you into <laughs> it. Have you enjoyed it? We don't it? just go <laughs> right sorry. in. You want to talk <laughs> anal? Let's go. I know, but I expect you're such a nice guy for this fucking guy. He's like, oh. I don't see you uh, into anal sex. That's you were into no, anal no, sex? No, no, because this is what I was going to tell you yeah. about because I'm, I'm really not that way no more since I became a Muslim, really halal. So if I was, it's not like I wouldn't do it, but if I had to, I would have to walk around with the person all day to see what they ate and stuff because you know it's real, <laughs> when you, but I mean you were, you had crazy days when you were doing drugs and you were fucking you know the the man of the hour you were out of your mind like, no no I read that like you were with seven hookers halal, one night halal. And, yeah. you can't do that you have to be clean I have to I be know. with them now. every day make sure what they're eating everything they eat has to evaporate for instance in their system you know because and they eat any pills or uh, any apples or seeds anything and it's just not good. It's can you believe good. the old Mike good. Tyson in terms of like even the pussy fever that you were in? Like, can you believe that? Like, like now you've got that under control. You're really in love with your wife, aren't oh, you? Oh, implicitly, yeah. And so, isn't it kind of liberating? You can go out and see all these hot chicks and stuff, and not even give them a second fucking thought. Well, that's true too. But you know, you never know because every time I go out, I'm with my wife. And right. nobody, she I'm doesn't just, let you. She doesn't let you off the no, hook. <laughs> no, I never leave. I never want to leave my wife. Right. I just, that's just how I want to live my life. Um, Do you I'm worry just, that you turn your wife? into your mother in a sense the mother you never had my wife is my mother right you know what i mean is that dangerous though in a relationship oh, that's extremely dangerous but um it is what it is she thinks hey, you should wear this today you should wear this you should wear this you should be put this way and this way. that's just who she is and she you like to, it oh yeah I love and you it. like it because you now feel like you're getting mothering i love being loved but can't but but can't that turn into something where you... I'm never going to have a mother. That's just over. I never had a mother. I'm never right. going to know what it's like to have a mother. But That's it's dangerous it. to turn other people into the mother you never no, had. No, I'm not turning her into a mother. She became my mother. She wants to be my mother. That's the See, role. I love my husband. I'm... Oh, God. My wife. But do you ever say to her, hey, I don't need a mother. I need a wife. But she is my wife. Right. So she's being my wife. She's, she's covering in all bases. She got you covered. Hey, listen... I'm just happy to be married to her. I don't care what she does. She's very hot. I've seen her. Yes, I agree. How Extremely did you hot. meet her? Uh, hey, listen. I met her. Um, I met her through her family. Because the family used to come to the fights and stuff. You met her oh, through, really? your fa through her father is a Muslim. And yeah, but I wasn't a Muslim. That's not how we became friends, though. Your father, when you were a young man, introduced his daughter to you. But the two of you couldn't click. You were in the wrong place. 
Right? No, she was only 12 years old, I guess, when I first Well, that definitely wouldn't yeah. click. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that would have been a real problem. <laughs> Isn't that weird? You knew your wife when she was 12? Isn't that strange? Absolutely. You know, it's so weird. And did she have fantasies? And like, as a little girl, I, well, one day I'll grow up and marry Mike Tyson? I have no idea. You did should... you ever ask her that? Um, of course she's going to say that. Right. You know? I don't know, but I, I just know I, I was happy to marry her. That's Meanwhile, that's Maybe what... she was raised to marry you because I, your, I listen, her father was such a fan. Listen, um, that's what she says not, but that's what I truly believe. Hey. That's what I truly believe. Her father didn't want her to be with me. That's what I believe. I know she doesn't want to believe that, but that's what I believe. Go back to prison for a second. I've been there twice with you, Howard. I know, Come but on. go back, go back. You never yeah. stay, though. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Mike, when you were in there and you're this famous guy, one of the most famous guys in the world, do the other prisoners taunt you and try to get you into some sort of, I don't know, fight or some kind of, or maybe even they try to befriend you because so they think they can get something from you on the outside? Or were you the bad guy on campus? Sometimes. Right. But um, you have to think about how, you know, um, this is what happens. You know, you look at the press, you look at me, Mike Tyson, famous champion, have to go to prison with bad people, murder. But when you really think about it, this is how I've, this was discovered. I was discovered in an institution with bad people. Oh, yeah. You and, grew um, up in institutions. Yeah, so um, this wasn't a hard problem at all. Just living right. on the outside was hard. <laughs> Going in that place was not hard at all. Wow. In other words, not hard at all inside. No. After not all, you all. recognize in other words, that. For a guy like me, no. In other words, so when you went into that's, prison. That's, um, that's taking the easy route out for me. Right. <laughs> that's taking the easy route out, baby. In other words, you grew up in prison. Most of my life, yeah, in a young adult life. And when you go into prison, it, as rough as it is, I would think that psychological torture would be, hey, I got all this money, I finally got all this success, and now they're taking it away from me and putting me in prison. But for you, it was kind of like, hey, man, so what? Yeah, but I had that. But when this, I was in you know too. that well, world. That's, I'm sorry, what? Uh, but when I was what? in prison, I had that too. I had everything I wanted in prison. I couldn't. Well, I could go to the hospital and stuff when I had to go. Right. But you know, um, I still did what I wanted to. I didn't. Get, I didn't smoke them, but um, I had my food that I wanted to eat. I never ate at the um, cafeteria. I ate. Um, How do you do outside. that? I don't know, but it just happens. No, but wait a second. The best thing that ever happened to prison was prison guards. You know, right. Yeah, that's the best thing I've ever The prison guards yeah. actually probably liked you because, because they didn't believe I belonged in there. Right. They and, felt uh, that you that you were innocent. Yeah. And so and, they took care of you. Well, that's what you call it. Yeah, that's what they did. So a prison guard would say, "Hey, listen, Mike, I'm going to bring you a steak for dinner." No, no, that's not how it goes. How does it go? That's not how it goes. Um, it's just energy. You have to know the energy. You have to be in the the the, the prison system. system to know the energy. Um, you just feel it, and then um. Someone makes the point that um, if there's anything I can do for you, let me know. And I just let them know I need some Chinese food. Okay, so <laughs> I need so some Chinese food. I really. But don't those really, guards expect payoff when they when you get out? In other words, oh, they'll bring no, you Chinese no, food. No, they're getting paid there. I'm listen. I, you know, when people say, um, "This guy was a CEO. Rick Ross was a CEO." No, we're happy for CEOs like Rick Ross. They make the prison system exciting because really a prison system's not exciting at all that's all you do you're locked up in your cell right and if you if you're a good boy they may let you go play for an hour but that's all you do it's not exciting like on television you're constantly locked in your cell what this idea of working out in prison and becoming big and huge and stuff did you get into the, the physical workout the prison workout yeah i was for a moment because i ran i had no chance i would do my road work and i would do some weights but then eventually they took the weights away from us why did they do that? Because they they said um, this is the we were using our turning our bodies into muscles. Oh no, weapons. 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 Yeah, yeah. That's the word weapons. <laughs> so so the so so the one joy you had in prison was the, the idea of going in there and working out and, and using some time up, and they took away the weights. No, but then I had um, a drug counselor in prison. I was porking too, so that was good too. Oh, yeah, you know, I was porking somebody. She was a lady, by the way. So, I was so, porking so, her, yeah. so how do you get to do that? In other words, you go for drug counseling. So you're alone in a room with the with the drug counselor. Yeah. Wow. Can you believe they, they trust you even to be hey, alone? Listen, um, it's very interesting because the drug counselor was a badass too, so they didn't care. She was, there, she, <laughs> she was one of those people she didn't care. You know, she'd been in there. Been, if you got 10 murders, 10, she's not afraid of nobody. It's one of those people, all right? So it wasn't like they were afraid, but they realized I was in there a little too long with her. So in other words, <laughs> a little too long. You, had you a, got caught? So you had a girl? No, I didn't get caught, but someone told on us, 
And I got nervous, internal affairs came in, and I was a little nervous, <laughs> and I had like a, a, another year before, uh, six months before I left, and the guy was very kind and polite, and he was saying, well, Mike, I, Mr. Tyson, I hear it's a possibility you will be leaving in six months. And then, of course, um, if we find out different about the case, um, there could be different arrangements, of course. And I said, oh, oh yeah. God. Wow. Damn. It's amazing. Just for porking the, the yeah. uh, counselor. Were you, were you could you, stay longer. Were you, so, did yeah. you, so did you cut her off? Like, did you say, fuck it, I'm not screwing this broad anymore? No way, Jose. <laughs> <laughs> were you, were, so in other words, when, 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 uh, were you attracted to this woman? Or is it because she's the only woman available, she becomes your, your sex object? I don't know. My criteria is in women are just breathing and stuff. You right. Know? You weren't being too picky. <laughs> yeah, I was picky. Was I mean, she a hot? Be... Was she hot? She was hot enough. <laughs> she had not a vagina. Too, not too hot. I wasn't on fire afterwards, so she was <laughs> just hot enough. You know? Would you, <laughs> so you didn't even have to masturbate in prison. In other words, you, you had a sexual... Out- How often would you go for drug counseling with this woman? Um, Every day. Three no. times a day. <laughs> three times a day? <laughs> you know, this, oh, man, this is some good stuff. Oh, my God. No, but she's good enough to Please, man, this is good people. This is nobody we let. She ain't no bad person. This no. This is a great person. You're not kidding. I want to meet her. <laughs> so you're telling me you would be in the drug counseling three times a day. No. Oh, I see my wife's going to kill me about this. But no, but sometimes, no, this is how it goes, okay? Right, right. First thing in the morning, I go to class to go to drug. Whatever, 90 minutes, for an hour and a half. I come back to my dorm house. I go to my job in the gym working out because they wanted me to stay kind of fit a little. Sure. Um... Mike Tyson, drug counselor, to the school. <laughs> you call, they call you to the school. Now go to school. <laughs> and then like, go get me. And, uh, <laughs> and then we go again. Boom, lunchtime. Come back. So then got to go back to another. Um, I got to go back to work. Because <laughs> I only got one class. Right. And I go back to work. Tyson, school, drug counselor. <laughs> and I have to go out there, listen, listen, I got to work out. I got to run. Okay, I can't oh run. I got to work too tired. Okay, I'm too tired. <laughs> Beat, I can't yeah. do that. I'm too fucking tired. You're having right? more fun in prison than yeah. most people have oh, on the outside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't get that much on the outside. Why'd you want to leave? Yeah. <laughs> I did want to leave, but shit. <laughs> but, but the, 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 you know, when, when, when a relationship like that starts... Did, how did, when you get out, isn't she expecting you to come no, visit no, her? No, no, no. Everything was told. You know, huh. Thank you. That no. was it. No. Over. You never saw her Everybody since Everybody understood. Huh? You, never, you never saw her once you got out of prison. No, um, kept, I talked to her quite a few times, but I never... Um, That's something. You know, that was just that. She was, no, it's not, she's great. Thank God. So, so forgive me if I'm wrong here, but it sounds like it, this was a party. You'd have your, your food. Prison and it was, was great. And it was like you'd had the, the, the COs there. They, they made sure that you had your Chinese food. Well, you know, at first it was really bumpy road because yeah. I had a problem dealing with it myself. It was all about me. Fuck you. I hate you. I your white fuck. You're raising pig. <laughs> you were angry with the the white world, the world in yeah, general. Yeah, it's the world, it's, and um, I mean, that was just an interesting experience for me. I was just so happy that um, I calmed down and got into the the move of things, you know. Right. When right, you got when you got out of prison, was that when you hooked up with Don King? Yes. And no, but know, I hooked up with him when he was in prison because that's how I got the contract to get that money. Right. Yeah, uh, big contracts. Yeah. And you know, this guy Don King, I've had him on the show many times. And he's a charming guy. I mean, you get in his uh, aura, and you know he's joking. He's uh, you know he's a character, and all. Yeah, of that. we've tried to nail him down uh, many my, times and never been able to do it. No, I my. can't believe Robin. Couldn't. You, Robin, you failed on that. Yeah, oh, we, we all failed. We couldn't do it. Yeah. We couldn't do it. But Mike, how does it? Robin. How does it happen? In other words, you get a. Uh, I guess you're not paying attention, right? Is, is that basically it? You're no, busy just, trying to be a fighter. That too, and I'm just doing what I want to do. Yeah. Basically, yeah. travel, have a bunch of girlfriends. I got like 45 girlfriends, and I'm probably married too. And I'm just really. Um, How much money do you think he owes you? Well, nobody owes me anything. Really? No, nobody owes me anything. I'm just happy to be alive and just, you know, breathing this air and functioning. No one owes me anything, and I don't own anyone. Any, I don't owe anyone. If you saw him today, would you just yell at him, or would no, you? No, I wouldn't you, do anything to him. He wouldn't. No, I would never jeopardize losing my wife and my children and right. the um, relationship I have with my kids. You keep the billion dollars, you keep all that stuff. But now, if if I was to be violated, it might be... Well, let me ask nice, you this, then. Nice if, if, if Don King was drowning and you happened to be there and you were the only guy who could save him, would you save his life or would you let him drown? I'd save his life. You would save his life? Yes. 
This is a different Mike Tyson. Who are you, by the way? Is this Mike Tyson? <laughs> no, we is wanted it. the fighter. Did the real Mike Tyson no die? No way. I don't want that. And trust me, I don't want that over my head. I'm, I'm the cause of somebody dying over some money. That's okay. You can keep that money. I have this. This is this is better than I ever had. I couldn't accomplish what I've accomplished with a, a billion dollars. I was nothing with my money. Do you regret putting the tattoo on your face? I, no way. You don't. You love it. No. Because yes. I thought it was the most severe thing that you, it was almost like you were angry at yourself. This is what, this was me playing pop psychologist. I was like, Mike's just fucking pissed off. And he just wants to, he, he wants to claim his own body in a way. Like in the most severe way. Like, like say, fuck it, man. This, I'm gonna. Oh, that's interesting that you had that. Because I felt like I was owned my whole life. Right. Yeah, and I, I think this was your way. way of trying to own your own body in a sense. I don't this know. This is but I my body. Yeah. It's my body. No, seriously. Do you, do you, do you. Understand that at all, or is that? that I understand it implicitly, but it, it's not that way. But it is that way. Why did you of. do it? Because I thought it was an awesome tattoo, and I wanted it. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And I, and I did it because I knew people would say that. Why did you do that? Why did you do that? And I just totally, <laughs> I'm just totally abstract from the ab average thinking person, of course. You know, for years, most tattoo artists would never tattoo a guy's face. They, a lot of them will not do it. Well, my artist wouldn't tattoo my face because my first idea wasn't this um, Maui signature. It was a bunch of hearts and stuff, and he said, I'm not going to do that. Why? He said, I'm not going to... He just don't want to have his work. He thought it was, that wasn't fitting for me. And so he, he said... I need, he said, you, if you do anything, you need to be a warrior. He said, you're a warrior. You need to have a warrior signal, um, signature on your face. Right. And so you said, okay, put it on me. No, I said, that's fine. When he said, come back in a couple of days and I'll f call you and we'll, we'll look, o look over some tribal. Are you glad he did that? Yeah, I'm so happy he did. Right. Like the paradox yeah, but you know name. what? It's the funny what? that you say you took... His name is Victor Paradox. Okay, right. Uh, it's funny that he says that, you know, he spent days before he got that because everybody assumed it was a spontaneous no, no, this occurrence. Part, when, you got, when, you have a, um, when you have a truly professional tattoo artist, he's not going to put anything on your face with his signature on it. No he's way. He's not going to do it. Yeah, he's I mean, not going to do it. Because it's one of the most famous tattoos in yeah. the world, right? Yeah, I mean, he's just not going to do it. But he didn't look at it. He didn't look at it there because Mike Tyson. He never looked at it. Mike Tyson's going to have my tattoo. Because I wanted heart. He could have just put heart to my face. He said, I'm not doing that. You have to go somewhere else. You know, and so right. that's why I respect that. And so we look for a good tattoo. So you're telling me you never had to fight in prison. You never had to fight another guy. No, yes, once or twice I get irritated and I hit somebody. But other than that, I didn't have no fight. And were they irritating you because they were challenging you? Or were they irritating you because they were just, hey, Mike, 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 give me something? No, I was mad because I got bad news from my lawyer. I see. Yeah. And the bad news, what, they wouldn't give you an early release yes. or something along those lines. Yeah, so then I, I get angry and I start hitting people. The first guy you saw, you just smacked. Yes. Well, somebody that, that probably angered me for something a few months ago, and this is the time to hit him for it. <laughs> 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 now, when you, <laughs> when you hit a guy with your bare hands, it's a whole different situation. Yeah, it's not good. It's really not good. Because you can hurt your hand. I always break my hand. It never fails. That's why I don't do it anymore. Isn't that amazing about fighting? People don't understand that. Like, like when you see fights on TV, they go on forever. Usually, when you see a fight in real life... And they it, don't last long in the street. No. One shot, man. Cause normally, because that's why um, UFC is so famous. Because as a person, me, Mike Tyson, I don't care who you are. If you're going to hit somebody and hurt a guy, the real objective, you want to get the guy on the ground. You right. Know what I mean, you right. don't want to stand up. You don't want to punch the guy. You want to get him on the ground for you to stop on him. Right. You're not going to break your foot. Yeah. You know, but if, if guarantee, I don't care how strong you are, how big you are. Well, you know, you got to break your hand because your hands are not meant to be hitting things. That's Mike, what, what, it is. what happened to boxing? When you were boxing, it was, it, I mean, boxing was a big, big deal. I can't even tell you who the world champ is right now. I can't even, I mean, I don't, maybe it's just me, but. You know, how time has changed now. Um, like, if I say this, listen, if I go on television, oh, so if I say it here, but this is the reality. You know, fighting, in, in order for boxing to be exciting, and this is what people don't want to hear. They want boxing to be exciting without this. In order for it to be exciting, you have to want to hurt him. Right. Bad. So what do you think? There's a lot of guys out there who just don't want to hurt anybody? No, exactly. Well, you can tell by the way they're fighting, they don't want to hurt each other. What, they fight few. like pussies? Well, they fight like, well, you don't hit me and I won't hit you. I remember how shocked I was when Buster Douglas fight happened. This is the, like the you first... You weren't more shocked than I was. Right. Okay. <laughs> Almost but nobody my... saw that fight because nobody had a, a, that expectation. I've never had the opportunity to talk to you before. But I, my, again, here's me playing pop psychologist. 
I always figured you just didn't want to win that fight. Like, like you'd had enough because, A, you were out of shape for the fight. Yeah. And it was almost like you're like, okay, let me fucking lose this thing already and be done with it. It was almost like committing suicide. Kind of in a way, yes. Because that's why when I, um, when I retired, that was another form of suicide. But it's killing some bad stuff. It's not killing a good person. You're killing the right person. But we don't know how to get the person that we're not supposed to kill out of the body of the guy that we should kill. Yeah, I understand that. that I know like, you would understand that one. Because uh, <clears throat> th there was a girl I knew who was in porn. Mm -hmm. And she said, I can't get out of porn. So she tattooed every part of her body so that it would force her out of porn. Like she said, I can't get out otherwise. I, so I made my body so they wouldn't want to sh photograph me anymore in this pornography. And in a sense, it's like you almost don't know, you know, the money's coming in, you're Mike Tyson, you're this huge success, but meanwhile, you're miserable. You're fucking uh -huh. miserable. I'm the most miserable person that I've ever met in my life was myself. Right. When I was at that height of fighting and success. Right. right. So all of a sudden, how do you end all of that in a, in a way? But you keep the good guy alive. Right. You know, um, it, it's all an inside job, man. It takes a long, it takes a long time of therapy, a long time of just um, challenging your decision-making qualities. Um, <clears throat> you're gonna make a lot of mistakes doing this stuff, but um, you have to get it done, or it's gonna kill you. Is that the point of your one-man show? Are you trying? Is the message, hey, man, if you manage to live long enough, that even the angriest guy in the world, the guy with the worst upbringing, the mother who was a prostitute, the one who was uncared for, unloved. Uh, you know, and custom The guy who the, grew up in uh, the system. Uh, is the point, hey man, if you can hang in there, maybe there's something beautiful at the end of the tunnel? I don't know. It's all about waiting for the transition and not getting old too soon and smart too late. Um, hopefully, I, I, I got this grasp now. You know, no one knows what's coming around the corner, you know, 10 minutes from now, 20 minutes from now. Um, I'm just enjoying what's going on now. And if it's if it's making, listen, because what I'm doing on Broadway and doing these, um, these shows, I'm not going to get wealthy doing this. Right. I love doing this. Right. And that's why I do it. But if, as far as doing this for money, I need a second job. There's no doubt about that. But this is what I love doing. I love entertaining people. Do you love, do, when you first got on stage and you had to do a one-man show, it had to be intimidating as hell because that's not your background. I mean, you're not um, a guy who When I got up. on that stage, I felt that I was, um, I thought, man... I don't know, I thought it was Sammy Davis Jr. or Julie Garland somebody. I just thought that this, this is where I belong. I right. belong. Really? In, instant gratification as soon as I went on the stage. Uh, it, instant. It, it wasn't like a movie. And I, Spike Lee helped you format the thing? In well, other words, Spike Lee had his format for, um, yes, the New York, the Broadway version. Mm -hmm. right. Because we had the show before Spike got involved for two weeks, and we had a a rock band, we had a vocalist, we had a piano player, and it was like big time Vegas, lights, cameras, action, and it made me feel so not me, I felt glamorous, I felt beautiful, and then Spike took all that away and put me up there by myself. Yep, but, and then, <laughs> but he was right, wasn't yes, he? Yes, People yes, don't want yes, to see you doing no. that. That would have been I a like joke. That. I like that because that, 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 um, that buffers me from really being honest. Right, it was like a facade. Yeah, yeah. It was a yeah. facade, but well, now I'm on there, and, and if you're not um, mostly, um, Compose. You're gonna cry. You're gonna, you know. Yes, have to. Be. It's just wow doing that stuff. And I say to myself, Why do you do this to yourself, Mike? Why you got? Why do you do this to yourself? And it's because I want people to look at me and see me. And I want them to applaud. So That's you don't get I nervous do. when you go up on stage? No, I'm nervous when I'm not on stage. Really? I'm nervous when I'm home and I'm not doing anything. <laughs> I think, How am I gonna feed these kids? How am yeah. I pay these bills? <laughs> That's, That's nerve wracking. Nervous. What is the game? Plan? All right, you Damn. got the one man show. I know you got a book coming out. You've been working on and that kind of stuff. So what is the game plan to get the money and get get? I'm not looking for the money no more. That's that's but you need that, it. That's gone, Howard. That's yeah. never going to happen. I work from check to check. Really, to there's show. nothing in savings. No, very small for kids and all that stuff. But as far as me, I'm going to die. Hopefully, I have life insurance where I have a headstone. But um, this is good stuff, Howard. This Does Evander Holyfield is he a wealthy guy? Did he hold on to his money? No, he was getting foreclosure um, statements. I don't know anything about his finances. Are you friendly with him at all now? Very friendly, yeah. You are? Yeah. Does he look at you every time and say, why the fuck did you bite my ear off? No, he never does. Do you have an answer for him? What is the answer? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. But that's so not you. You are a fan of boxing, and you are, a, you are an aficionado of boxing. But I wasn't a boxer back then. I was just a guy doing, living my life. Were you scared that night? High. No, I'm never, well, I'm scared every night, but never scared that... Uh, He's going to beat me up, kind of scared. Right. That must be a wonderful feeling, never to be scared of a man's physical prowess, that you know you can take down any guy. No, no, no. I don't know that I could take down any guy. I never about his physical powers. 
I don't look at life like that. I look at life that um, God made men big and small. Yeah, but I and fantasize. And Smith and made men equal. But I fantasize no. about being a great <laughs> gladiator, a great warrior. In other words, I, I've been a in a ton of fights. Warrior, a physical yeah, a warrior. A physical yeah. warrior. I don't have that ability. I've been in a million fights, and I've lost almost all of them. And, and I know when you were young, you lost a lot of fights. You were heavy set and stuff, and then you learned how to box. But, I mean, what is that feeling like when you fucking take your fist and you fucking pound someone to the point that they pass out? It's, there's got to be no better feeling. It's like drugs. Right. It's like drugs. It gives you everything you want. Yes. But it takes back so much more in return. What does it take back? Everything. You your get, soul. Yeah, your spirit. Your soul. How do you, you think about it? How do you, I want to, to take people's nose and stick it in their brain. How do you want to do that if you're humanitarian? How do you want to do that to another human being? Because you want to kill them, right? But well, that's back then, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, and, that's back and, then. And so the point is that you really are a sensitive guy inside, and that sensitive guy it was almost like you couldn't let him out or else you wouldn't want to put somebody's yeah. nose into their brain. Or right. maybe that's what you're protecting. Yeah. I guess, no, I don't want to hurt any pe- anybody no more like that. Do you feel bad about, Howard, do you feel I mean, bad about used... people that you hurt? Yeah. You do? Yeah. That's what I wanted to ask. I wanted to... You ended people's careers. Yeah. So many people stop boxing after you hit them. Yeah. You know, that was what a Mike Tyson punch was like. Yeah. They stopped boxing. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, listen... That's the game. Yeah, I wanted to be somebody. Yeah. You were. Yeah. You definitely are. You definitely are someone. Well, Pretty back then, I guess, at least. Yeah. So, did you ever give it? Did you ever give anal sex to anybody? Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, but I don't do that anymore. I don't do but that you've anymore. done it. You've done it. I don't to people. do that. I don't do that. I'm halal. You know, you can't do that stuff. That's because, considered dirty. Yes, because people. You gotta be. If I did do it, I have to be around the person every day. Walk, walking around, find out what to eat. They got seeds. Because <laughs> when you have an anal sex, you're, you're rupturing duty. that. Yeah, duty. You're, yeah, you're, you're rupturing in that toxic bag. <laughs> a to- and the toxic bag busts the stool. The stool that busts. You know. The Koran does not allow anal. Let's be honest. Anal is bad. It is. Anal is bad. How religious are bad. you? Do you actually pray every day? Man, God, I pray every day. I miss prayers. I try my best. I, hey. Um, Where do you stand on gay marriage? Gay marriage, I think if you're happy, you should just be with who you're happy right. with. Right. Doesn't religion interfere with, with sensible thinking nah, sometimes? Uh, no, but listen... Um, I don't know. I never heard. It's not much sensible thinking when you think about you can stop somebody from living their life. So what? You, what do we want to do? You think God would want to kill all these people? Of course, because they have a different. No, I don't believe. Right. It. I just don't believe that. You know, you have to have some kind of rationality. Uh, right. So you can't follow everything in the Bible. Why, or why, the why is it always about hurting and killing somebody? It's crazy. Why has it got to be about hurting and punishing somebody? Why can't it be about just getting along with people? Most religions, though, seem to want to hurt and punish people. That's where I have a well, problem with religion. Well, the people who practice them, yeah. yeah. I don't want to punish I don't know if the religion is doing I'm, it. I'm not God. I can't even represent Islam. How could I represent, you know, 900 million people? Right. You know what I mean? I, I wasn't a good Christian. How am I going to be a good Muslim? Hey, did you ever you know? meet Muhammad Ali? Yeah. Of is course that my, he has. Is that mind-blowing <laughs> to you? Like, yeah. to meet him? Was yeah, he the um, greatest of all time? Um, there's no doubt. But not only is... I've met, met Muhammad Ali probably a hundred times, but every time you meet him, it's like the first time you know there's something special about this gentleman right here. Now he's like unable to talk, right? So you've never, have you ever been able to have like a conversation with him? Well, um, when I'm around him, he doesn't talk much, and I don't say much to him. I just watch him. Where do you see him? Where do you, where do you meet with him? Um, if he's in a, at his home, I met, I met him at his home on a couple of occasions, and he came over my house on a couple of occasions. Hey, no wow. kidding. So, so yeah. yeah. What? What was the first time you met him, Mike? First time I met him, I was in Spa for Juvenile Detention Center. I was in, uh, and he came to visit the kids. Like I do, I come and visit the kids at the hospital. That's crazy. Yeah. Was that like a defining moment in your life? Yeah, I knew that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be, I didn't know if I wanted to be a boxer, but I knew I wanted to be famous. Right. And you were what, about 13 years old? Probably 11. And you're in the center and like, look who shows up. It had to be a great day. I mean, you probably didn't have many great days there. No, so. I had great days there every day. There was a bunch of kids there. There was a kid. There was a bunch of kids. We were fighting every day. We were stabbing each other. We were playing basketball. We That's great. Fun. Yeah. It sounds like hell to me. I think you're kidding yourself that that was great. No, not to well, have a family, not to hey, have... Um, listen, um, if you never had it, how, how, how would you know if it was great or bad? Everybody's mother and father was my mother and father. But I grew up feeling very unsafe in my community. I grew well, up I in a hellhole. 
I wasn't unsafe too, but you had to fight to become safe. I did. I fought and I didn't. I didn't win, so but I wasn't fought? safe. You know, I fought. Listen, listen, I always fought. Listen, Howard. This is what I found out about fighting, which is very interesting about fighting. Um, you always have to fight, right? Even if you know. You